Hi, my name is Dave and today I want to give you a look at this um, fascinating model that I just made and it's taken me quite some time to complete this. This is a model of the Palomar 200 inch Hale telescope. Uh, it was completed in the 1940s and um, I'm not sure if I should really call it a model it is to the proper scale. It's a precisely 1 64th scale. Everything is proportional, but it's not a perfect model. It doesn't have all the features of the original. I didn't attempt to duplicate every little thing on it. Nevertheless, it is a pretty good replica of the real deal. And it does feature um, actual, it does actually work. It functions. This is actually a small telescope. It's about an 80 millimeter reflector telescope. So unlike some of the other models you might see, this one actually works. I'll give you some close-ups and we'll talk about some details. Okay, so let me demonstrate how this thing works. It works almost exactly like the real thing. It moves in the same way. Uh, this would be north up that direction. Moves this way and that way. And because this is a Newtonian, I had to add a rotating cage. The real one doesn't rotate like this. But in order to make this a usable real telescope, and to be able to use it in different positions in the sky, you have to be able to rotate the eyepiece. There's the eyepiece right there. So I put this rotating cage on the front. That's one of the things that's not precisely like, it's not a very precise model in that respect. But the main thing is, it's an actual functional telescope. I tried to get some of the complexity of the structure, but I didn't, I didn't match it perfectly. I did carve this out of, this is all carved out of a solid piece of aluminum here. And so is this. This front piece is a piece of, uh, it's a cylindrical chunk of aluminum that I carved. This is a rectangular piece that I carved up. And uh, on my webpage, I'll show you some close-ups of all that. And as you can see, I polished it all up, make it pretty. We'll compare this with some other models and uh, the toy one uh, that you may confuse this with easily. When I was a kid, I used to see ads like this for the scale model of the Mount Palomar telescope, uh, real working telescope. You can see the moon's craters, Wonderful. Sounded very interesting. I always wanted one. Maybe that's the inspiration for this model. Anyway, here's, okay, the, so here's the toy from the 1950s or so. Uh, and it's made out of plastic. This thing is lucky to have survived. It is a working telescope, just like my model. Uh, however, you can see that this is considerably different. First of all, it's made of plastic. Mine is made of solid aluminum and metal uh, and glass. Anyway, this little telescope, well, although it's quite charming, isn't a very good model. It's, it's not nearly as good as mine. The proportions are all wrong here. This is too long. Uh, it also doesn't rotate like this, like mine does. It doesn't rotate and like the real one does. So uh, in that respect, and they, they had to do that. You know, a toy this thing would have had to, if it rotated like that, it would have had to have a rotating cage like mine does. So um, obviously they couldn't afford to do that and sell it and make a profit, I suppose. Anyway, the optics on this are even worse than, <laughs> than my cheap model, which is no big deal either. But um, what are the main detractions from this? And I used to drool over these ads and then I, I realized that this wouldn't work quite right. and I, you know, I think that's one of the reasons I never went ahead and really made a strong demand to my parents to get one of these um, because of because of that uh, deficit. Anyway, it's cute and it's charming, but it's uh, nowhere near as good as mine, in my opinion. I'll put it, I'll put it next to mine just to show you, just for comparison. Okay, now you can see both of them, uh, and you can see that see mine rotates like so. This one doesn't do that. It's frozen there. It's glued in place. It just wasn't made to do that. Um, 
and the proportions are different. The scale is almost the same. It's about this, this scale isn't right, so it's about 1 64th. Mine is almost exactly a perfect 1 64, 1 to 64 scale model. Um, pretty darn precise. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a couple of differences. Let me show you some other interesting... Another reason I became interested in making this model here was because I had obtained, um, by just pure luck, a couple of really nice models by Barry Crist. Barry Crist is probably, if not the premier telescope model maker, certainly uh, among the, the very best. This is a model of the 60 inch that's on uh, Mount Wilson. And it was the first, at the time it was the biggest telescope around uh, the early 1900s. Uh, at, the, at that time it became for a while the, the biggest telescope on the planet. Uh, this is not a working model, of course. It's really tiny and diminutive, but look at the detail. I'll show you some close-ups of this. Uh, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Here's another model. This is also by Barry Crist, and this is the 100-inch Hooker telescope. This telescope did some of the most uh, valuable and important work in the early 1900s, uh, 1920, 1930, 1940. Uh, Hubble discovered the expansion of the universe and so forth with this telescope. This is to the same scale. One of the reasons I wanted to make this was to demonstrate right next to each other. You can see the difference in scale between these two telescopes. This is a 200 inch telescope, which sounds like it's only twice as big as a 100 inch telescope. But look at how much more massive this thing is. And you ignore the details of the models and so forth. Just look at the scales. These are both at 1 64th scale. And look at how much more massive this 200 inch is. It was uh, the Hubble Space Telescope of the early 1940s, 1950s, and the mid and late uh, 20th century. So it was, uh, it was a very, very big deal. And I'm going to show you some close-ups of this. Okay, here's a close-up of the 100 inch scale model at 1 64th by Barry Crist. Superb. Look at the detail here. And it has a shiny thing there. It's not really a functional telescope, though. But he went as far as putting at least a, a shiny piece of metal or something back in the back there. Look at how cool this thing is. And this thing is uh, quite wonderful in terms of all the detail. Okay, this is the 60 inch. Uh, there's a place you could actually look through this. There's a couple of different ways to, that you can look through this. It uh, actually can be used as a Newtonian. Um, uh, Cassegrain and several other possibilities. One, one thing you can do is look right through that eyepiece there. Apparently I've read descriptions of people that look through this telescope. Wonderful 60 inch telescope. It's a very big telescope. George Ellery Hale was also very uh, important with regard to the Yerkes telescope, which actually um, is near, lives near Chicago. Anyway, the Yerkes telescope is, I believe, still the biggest functioning refractor in the world. It's a 40 inch telescope. And for a time, it was the biggest in the world. Well, in order to complete what they call the Hale trifecta, I wanted to make a model of the 40 inch. This is also at uh, 1 64th scale. This is an Alvin Clark objective. Huge, massive mount. The floor moves up into very, very wonderful, big Warner and Swayze mount on this thing. Absolutely beautiful. And this is, again, not a perfect model. This is my model, so it's not perfect. It's, it's perfect in terms of the scale. I got as close as I could with that. Uh, but the details are far from, far from perfect. It does actually work, though. This actually has a little tiny, um, <laughs> little tiny lens in it, and it actually does focus. You can look at the moon with this thing. It's uh, not a great telescope, but it does work. One of my favorite telescopes is a telescope that I used for many years at Chamberlain Observatory. I used to teach for the University of Denver. And uh, this is a 20-inch Alvin Clark refractor. Um, this is the scale model at 1 64th. Again, 
not perfect. It actually, this one doesn't actually function as a telescope, but it functions as a, a sighting scope because it is hollow and you can look through it, look at the moon. So it's not exactly a functional telescope in that respect, but in other respects, it's very similar. And the scale is uh, at least approximately right at 1 64th. While I was at it, I thought uh, if I'm making 1 64th scales, scale models, uh, 1 to 64, why not do the Hubble Space Telescope? So this is a model that I made of the Hubble Space Telescope. Now you can see something really strange here. That's because my telescopes are functional telescopes. And this actually has a little tiny Maksutov in it. So it's a functioning telescope. And this is where the eyepiece goes. There's a star diagonal there and so forth. I've even got a focuser on it. We can focus it right here. So it's a functional telescope. It is 1 64th scale. And the scale is very close, very accurate. And I think it's interesting to compare that with, uh, with a 200-inch Mount Palomar telescope right next to it. Well, what would the Hubble Space Telescope be without the Space Shuttle? Um, by coincidence, I found this. And this is, believe it or not, an actual telescope. Uh, kind of a bizarre telescope. But it's also a 1 64th scale model of the Space Shuttle. Picture it actually carrying in here. This is, these are parts of the telescope. So, um, the payload bay would be empty, and you could fit this telescope inside there. That's how it got up to space. It's one of the deals about one of the important attributes of the Hubble Space Telescope was that it would fit in this thing. They had they designed it so it would fit in this in the space shuttle. Well, here's the here's the little telescope. There's the objective. There's the lens. Head. Uh, let's see. The this goes in here somewhere. I think. I can't remember, uh, something like that. Maybe it goes like this. Yeah, that's where it goes. So anyway, that's where the, uh, that's where the telescope, that's where you can use this as a telescope. It's got a mounting block here. Oops. It's got a mounting block. So you could actually use this uh, as a, it's a little telescope. It's made by Jason, I believe. Just to give you a little sense of scale, Here's a little human-sized figure. This is actually a... He's a little tall. He's actually about seven feet tall on this scale. Anyway, at 1 64th, that's a human being. Gives you a sense of how big and how small things really are. I hope you've enjoyed my tour of this scale model of the 200-inch Hale telescope on Mount Palomar. Thank you very much.